So we're coming to the end of a seven day prayer challenge. And it's my hope that you have spent some extra time this week with the Lord in prayer. If you've struggled, I want to give you one tip that maybe would help. Uh, 10 minutes can be a really long time. And so if you've had a goal and you're struggling to meet that goal, I want to commend you for growing in prayer. And also I want to suggest that if it has been hard, maybe go ahead and split it up. Maybe spend five minutes in the morning praying for yourself and your family and five minutes in the evening praying for our church and our world. And regardless of whatever you do, if you've grown in prayer, I want to encourage you and say that you will be blessed because you've sought the Lord and to keep at it, to be faithful. So we've got two more days and I want to spend today looking at two churches. Uh, one of them on the outside looked great, but had problems. And the other one from the outside looked as if it were going to die. And Jesus gave great encouragement to both of them. And it's my prayer that we would hear the things that he says to them and that we would find great encouragement and strength as a church. So to begin in Revelation chapter three, Jesus talks to the church in Sardis. And he says, I know your works. You have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. That's a terrifying thing for the savior to say to a church. But he says it because he loves his church and he gives them great hope. And I think we need to recognize it's possible for a church to have a balanced budget, the best staff, great programs, but to have lost the thing that's most important. And Jesus says to this church, wake up. Don't assume because things look good that they are good. Recognize that there is danger. He says, strengthen what remains and is about to die, that he has more work for them to do. Verse three, he says, remember what you received and heard. Keep it and repent. I believe what he's talking about is just the good news that Jesus died for our sins and rose from the dead, that the spirit of God is calling believers together to spread the good news of the gospel, to meet the needs of the poor, that, that we have a mission and that the whole church has to be on mission. And we stay on mission by remembering the love of God for us, by remembering the way that our sins are forgiven. Jesus says, remember what you've received. Remember when you were saved. He warns that if they will not wake up, that he will come against them like a thief and they will not know at what hour that he comes against them, but offers this encouragement. He says, yet you still have a few names in Sardis, people who have not soiled their garments. They will walk with me in white for they are worthy. The one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments and I will never blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. So there is hope for faithful believers, even in a church that is inward dead. And so I want to say to you as a believer, be faithful and ask that you would pray for our church, that we would be full of the life that comes from Jesus. So that's the church that looks good on the outside, but it's dead on the inside. The church that looks like it's about to die from the outside, Jesus offers amazing hope to. So the church in Philadelphia, he says, verse eight, I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, which no one is able to shut. I know that you have but little power and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. So he recognized that they're not strong, but he commends their faithfulness and says, in spite of the fact that you're not strong, I have opened a door for you. And he gives them the encouragement that they can still be faithful as a church. And he says that he has loved them at the end of verse nine and verse 10. He says, because you have kept my word about patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world. Now, I would say to us, I don't know that Jesus promises to exempt us from an hour of trial, but I do know this based on this verse, that Jesus rewards patient endurance when things look bad. And so if you are a believer who struggles and you look around at the church in America and you think, man, does the church have a future? It does. Be faithful. Jesus will recognize that faithfulness. And, and so he says, verse 11, I am coming soon. Hold fast to what you have so that no one may seize your crown. 
the one who conquers, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. Never shall he go out of it, and I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down from my God out of heaven and my own new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, you hear what happens in that passage? Uh, Jesus says, your church is small, it's, it's suffering, and, and yet... There's a great city that's coming out of heaven and God himself will be there. And as we are faithful, God will reward and bless our faithfulness with a type of permanence that cannot be changed. And so I want to say to you that you have great hope as you hold to the truth of the gospel, that we as a church have opportunities that we must take for the kingdom of God so we can spread the good news of Jesus around Holly and around the world. And that if Jesus gives us opportunities, no one can stand in our way, no matter how bad things look. So be encouraged. Jesus is still Lord of the church. Father, I pray that we would have life as a church. I ask that you would give us strength, that we would take advantage of every opportunity to do good, to build your kingdom, and that you would keep us faithful. And I pray this in Jesus' name, amen.